Well, hello everybody, Rich Green here. I'm coming to you recorded from my family home in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, built in 1902. And um, I hope you're all having a great expo. Uh, I would like to do a different kind of a presentation for you today, a quickie, uh, 20, 25 minutes. And the topic is abundance. So let me share my screen here. abundance. Uh, this is a concept that I became aware of a few years ago. Uh, I had the good fortune to do some work with the Singularity University, which is where NASA Ames Research Center is in Mountain View, California, not far from where I live in Palo Alto. And I was able to meet some interesting people like Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis and some other wonderful people at Singularity University who talk about exponential thinking, having an abundance mindset as opposed to a scarcity mindset. And that really struck me. It's like, yes, a lot of us bog ourselves down with negativity. We don't grow. We don't grow our companies the way we could because we've got this scarcity mindset, scarcity like, oh, all of my competitors are discounting, so I should discount too, and there goes your profit. Stop thinking that way. Think in terms of abundance, and I'd like to show you how that works. Uh, so a nod to Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis. Uh, both of them have tremendous literature in the space. I highly recommend it. Ray Kurzweil is the director of engineering at Google. My goodness, this is a powerful man. And he says, abundance is a powerful antidote to today's malaise and pessimism. Peter Diamandis is a medical doctor and PhD. He's written many books, uh, starting with abundance. He wrote a book called Bold. I recommend them all. And you will learn from uh, this, th this literature, as well as their websites, how to get into uh, an exponential mindset, an abundance mindset, and how to translate that mindset into a new way of doing business, a new way that's progressive and potentially incredibly profitable. So look up these guys, Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis. And I'm also gonna share with you, I have credentials to be an optimist. Um, I grew up in a sense of abundance, and that was because of my dad, David Green, um, who lived in this house. And he was literally the president of the Optimist Club. And what did these guys do? Well, they, and women, they, they just got together and figured out a better way forward for themselves, for their community, for their families, from an optimistic point of view, an abundance point of view. The Optimist Creed, promise yourself to forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future. I'm very proud of my dad, as you can tell. He did a lot of cool things in his career, not the least of which he designed the Patriot Missile Launcher. Now, when the U.S. government came to his company called Oshkosh Truck Corporation, which specialized in four-wheel drive trucks, four by fours, they said, we want you to design a Patriot missile launcher. And it was really, really heavy. And they said, it has to go really, really fast. So my dad said, well, what the heck? Let's make an eight by eight. Let's make an eight wheel drive truck. He designed it um, with a massive amount of power. They got the contract and the rest is history. This is an example of optimistic abundance thinking, can do. What new techniques can we apply? What new technologies can we find to make the thing that needs to be made. You do that from an abundance and an optimistic point of view. So instead of thinking, oh, pessimistically about the scarcity of customers, the scarcity of profitability, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could grow our business 10% next year? And most, most of our companies can't do that. But why don't you flip it around, go into an abundance mindset, mindset and think, we're going to increase our profitability by 10 times. Go from 10% mindset to a 10x mindset. How the heck can you do that? Well, you do that with exponential thinking and by leveraging exponential technologies that are coming directly into our space here at CEDIA. Let's explore 
what that exponential mindset is like. <sighs> exponential thinking is not natural for human beings. We live in a linear world. We think in a linear way. We think that the next five years are going to be just like the last five years. That is not the case because technology is accelerating. It continues to improve upon itself year on year. Therefore, it goes exponential. It was Ray Kurzweil who first cracked the code on this, and his books on exponential data are very convincing across many, many industries. Uh, it does work. It is happening. Technology is accelerating the pace of improvement. So we get trapped in linear thinking, that scarcity mind mindset, when we are actually in the midst of exponential growth, which is the abundance mindset. I'm going to share with you some, uh, some bits that I picked up from Peter Diamandis and his 360-degree uh, mindset um, website. Six benefits of an abundance mindset. If you can change your way of thinking from scarcity to abundance, look what can happen to you. You understand that the world is becoming more abundant. So if you have a hopeful, optimistic, compelling vision for your future, and you can share that with your employees and partners, that will set you apart from your competitors because they don't know how to do this yet. And it helps you attract the best talent to build the best team for your mission. Number two, you don't re resent missed opportunities. There's more opportunity out there than we can possibly uh, take advantage of. We're living in a world of ever increasing opportunities. So next year, there will be more opportunities. The year after that, more opportunities. You just have to be open to them and see them. Number three, you don't fear the future. Instead, you embrace it. You are excited to learn all you can to create the future. Don't be the victim of a future. Create the future you and your business desire. By creating a future, you are in control. You are proactive. You are making it happen. So don't fear the scarcity around you. Go ahead, charge out, and make it happen. Number four, maybe our competitors are potential collaborators. Maybe we can make a bigger pie in our marketplace. Have you ever invited your competitors out to lunch or dinner just to have a friendly conversation and say, hey, you know what? I don't think we all need to be discounting like we do. Can't we just work a little bit more cooperatively? You can do things like that. You can pursue that 10x improvement. Number five, you are reinventing your business through a digital lens. One of the engines of exponential growth is the digitization of the world. And so you need to digitize your company. Get away from, paper, from analog paperwork, go to digital transactions on mobile devices that your technicians can fill out in the field and be informed with in the field. So digitize your company. Number six, as a leader, you have to express leadership. You convey a hopeful and compelling future. Give your employees and your partners a future that they can believe in and work for. People inherently want good news. So we need data-driven optimism. We need the facts that help us define that exponential future. This is a chart that shows, uh, it's called the alchemy of growth. The three horizons uh, of oh, the evolution of a business. So in the first horizon, time to the right, profit goes up, you're extending and defending your core business. That very often gets mired in a, in a scarcity mindset. There just aren't enough customers or enough, there isn't enough business. I can't make enough money. Horizon two is you build an emerging business. Somehow you bust through that. For most of us, it's because of referral business. We, we do good work for people. We always do what we say we're going to do. The basics of business start to sink into your marketplace. You build a reputation and you start building an emerging business. And horizon number three is when you embrace disruptive technologies and create entirely new business models. 
get out there, get in front, and you will succeed. Part of the singular university method is to talk about the six D's progression, the six D's. What are they? Well, it's, I'm going to go real quick, digitized, deceptive, disruptive, demonetized, dematerialized, and democratized. Let's go through these because this is the core, this is the essence of exponential growth. This is, this is happening. It will continue to increase and it will affect our businesses. We need to embrace this. Number one, digitized. Anything that can be digitized will be digitized. So it becomes, uh, our, our businesses become an information-based technology and that's how we enter exponential growth. So starting, oh no, maybe 20 years ago, it was the digitization of media, the digitization of business process, medical procedures, and so on, that led to some of this exponential growth I'm talking about. It's deceptive because we think in linear terms, this is all working at exponential rates. So think about the power of exponential growth. It really takes off after it breaks the whole number barrier. So you're kind of creeping along incremental little improvements. You're thinking we're dead in the water. This isn't working. Uh-uh. <clears throat> Two quickly becomes 32, which quickly becomes 32,000 and so on. So this is how exponential growth works. It, it's, it's not intuitive, but it works. It's disruptive. The new emerging products and services that embrace an exponential mindset outperform in terms of cost and effectiveness. Once you can stream music on your phone, why would you bother buying CDs and records? We've seen this over and over again in our industry. Demonetized. So money is becoming removed from the equation. Software is less expensive produced than hardware and copies are virtually free. So we're getting to a point where money becomes um, tiny. Uh, we're in a dematerialized uh, world. So physical products, what we used to sell as separate items of physical hardware are simply becoming software. Mark Andreessen, who invented the Netscape web browser and now is a very successful venture capitalist likes to say that software is eating the world. He's right. So watch out for software dematerializing hardware and how that changes your profit picture and democratize. So once something is digitized, more people have access to it. You can spread into communities and markets that you never thought you could get into before. It's not exclusively for the wealthy. So there are technologies coming into our space quickly and one of them, as you know, I love to talk about is extended reality, augmented reality, virtual reality, um, and so on. And when you can digitize and demonetize all, a, a lot of the media and collaboration and communication technologies that we rely on by simply putting on a pair of augmented reality glasses and immersing yourself in a highly productive, highly informative office environment, things change rapidly. Uh, this is happening right now in the industry. So augmented reality and the spatial web, which is the infrastructure of augmented reality, um, will become ubiquitous over the next, well, by the year 2030. So it takes 5G networks, we got it. It takes uh, low latency networks, we got it. And this will impact every industry from retail to advertising, education and entertainment. It affects, it affects our industry. Uh, some people might find it perfectly satisfying to sit in their chair, put on special glasses and have a completely immersive entertainment experience in their head. Uh, that's a different metaphor for home theater, isn't it? Everything is smart. Everything becomes embedded with intelligence. So we have, to, we have to embrace the fact that this accelerating penetration into the home 
of intelligent devices won't stop. It will pervade everything. And we need to be masters of integrating every little bit and piece. Uh, we're, we're already below $5 for fully functional AI on a chip. Uh, so we're going to see a lot of uh, common appliances having machine learning algorithms uh, in them, and, and they will be talking to each other. AI will achieve human level intelligence. This is Ray Kurzweil again by 2030. Uh, there's some controversy about what human level intelligence really means. Just get over it. It's the stuff is going to become really useful. Predictive analytics, uh, anticipatory algorithms, enriching our lives at a fraction of current cost. So every industry spanning industrial design, healthcare, education, entertainment, they're all going to be impacted. So AI becomes pervasive. And then we have AI human collaboration, human in the loop, they call it. AI as a service. Uh, we'll be seeing AI becoming entrenched in everyday business operations, serving as cognitive, cognitive collaborators for our employees. Isn't that interesting? So how can you empower your employees to become super employees, to become super efficient, super proficient, and super accurate? AI, augmented reality, that's what does it. It's already here. Uh, the Microsoft, Microsoft HoloLens 2 is deeply entrenched in industrial uh, procedures right now. A company called Tactile is doing this. It's like a step-by-step -step guided procedure for service and maintenance. You can do this for work behind the rack. You can do this uh, for looking with x-ray vision, looking through your walls to see where the pipes, plumbing, and electrical is. All doable right now. Uh, think about Jarvis, <laughs> you know, um, we will be able to adopt a Jarvis-like software shell, and that will not only improve the quality of, of our lives, but it will improve the efficiency of our businesses, another mechanism for abundance, another mechanism for exponential growth. So we will... As, as AI becomes cheap and pervasive, we will have these software shells that protect us, inform us, immerse us. So, you, you know, things are changing. Uh, people are looking for a more peaceful, harmonious, humane, sustainable lifestyle. And I, I'm watching for this stuff. And there was this article that I saw in Fast Company magazine about a, a company in Denmark. This da Danish neighborhood is made in almost entirely from wood. So sustainable building materials, little communities where you can walk, where you're close to your neighbors. You can walk to the market. You're close to nature. You're growing food between the buildings. This is the future that we can anticipate and we can help make happen. We are the masters of building automation, of helping buildings become more energy efficient and sustainable. And we can help people design more humane lifestyles for themselves and their families with the work that we do. We can even guide the architects that we work with. So the decade ahead is going to be the best time ever to be an exponential entrepreneur. Now is the best time to be in business. Are you clear about how you're going to use these meta trends, AI, AR, exponential growth? And what kind of company are you going to build next? I want you to think about your company in the year 2030, and it will be way more interesting and more profitable than you can possibly imagine, but you have to start right now. You have to learn the technology. You have to go to Cedia and learn the technology, read the white papers, listen to our podcast, get to know this stuff, talk to your peers, get, get involved with, uh, with your friends, and start to hire the people now that you need to be in place five years from now. They will need nurturing, they will need training, and it will cost money to do this. Plan for it now, 
plan for an exponential company right now. Okay, so this part is me talking. Um, markets will open up and expand like we have never seen before. We are entering the era of abundance. We truly are. There has never been a better time to be in the home and lifestyle technology integration business. I just made up another definition for who we are. COVID, climate change, political upheaval, idiotic people and noise are wearing us down. We all feel it. That all throws us into a scarcity mindset. But the home becomes more of a refuge, a safe harbor, a place to retreat to human values. And who's better prepared to expand into this new emphasis on humane living than us, the technology integrators? Architects and builders will be seeking anyone, us, with experience and a soul. Our industry will thrive. So stop thinking with a scarcity mindset and think with an abundance mindset. And remember, our fiercest competitor is a lazy mind. Don't be lazy. It's time to think positively and broadly about ways to enrich people's lives. It's not easy. We need to be really good at what we do, run a smart business, keep our promises, deliver delight, anticipate the unexpected with grace. Um, weird things always come up, handle them with grace. Be superb and persistent communicators, even with bad news. Get CEDIA certified for crying out loud and flaunt it. Um, Train yourself, educate yourself. What we do is really hard. Don't assume you can just uh, lazily walk your way through it. No, it's really hard. You have to learn your trade. And stop treating your customers as quick hits and build lifelong relationships. When you start business with somebody, it's for life. The key to survival in this accelerating world is competence with compassion. So we're, we're, we're seeing convergence. We've been seeing it happen for about 30 years when CDA started. Digitation, digitization causes convergence and convergence causes abundance. So when we put on those AR glasses and augmented audio into our ears, the convergence of communications media and controls, even controls take off and it never comes back like it was. Augmented reality will invade the home and the lives of our families. Control systems will be virtualized. We may not need keypads and touch panels in the wall anymore. So the key to convergence will require us to master pervasive networks. You gotta get really good at 5G, 6G, Wi-Fi 6, and so on. Application programming interfaces, humane interfaces, make the UI more intelligible. And this is new. Start learning about compelling storytelling. We help our clients design immersive narratives for their lives. And we do that with more humane, more sensible, more sustainable living. So let's look for that opportunity, those opportunities. This is the vision of the, of the Tesla power roof. Those are solar tiles on the roof. We'll, we'll soon have abundant power. We'll soon have sustainable architecture. We'll soon have healthy, living. Wellness is the new luxury. Get into the health profession, healthcare at home. Um, the International Well Building Institute has a wellness scorecard uh, on air, water, nourishment, light, fitness, comfort, and mind. Start thinking in terms of optimism in what we do, and you will thrive with that abundance mindset. Our fiercest competitor is a lazy mind. So get with it, get sharp and take care of business. Okay, and I wish I could answer questions, but I'm done. Hope you enjoyed this. Take care everybody, think abundance.